Hello DevOps friends, welcome to Full Stack Live, the live stream by Opsative. I'm Jochen. Hello, how is everyone? Hey Exegete. Hello there. Oh, sorry for the for the delay. Blah, blah. Again, sorry for the delay. Um, I was just about to start the stream when I realized that someone must have tinkered with the co-working scene last night and uh, not realizing that uh, they broke all the other scenes um, in the process and so I had to go and fix this. I really need to find out who that was and um, yeah, um, so yeah, I uh, only realized that uh, shortly before going uh, live or even after. No, shortly before when I did my tests and uh, so um, yeah, we are starting a little bit late. I apologize, but um, yeah, we'll do some DevOps work nonetheless. Today uh, is going to be uh, one of my regular live coding streams where I simply do stuff that uh, um, I already have on my plate that I need to do for my day, day job and um, I'll share what I'm doing with you. Yeah, those darn gremlins, isn't it? Um, something um, must have uh, snuck in last night and, and did these things. Um, um, probably related to a new Pomodoro timer and a uh, shared task list for viewers or something like that. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to using that on my next co-working stream. But to today is not that day. Today it's uh, live coding and... Um, we're going to do a few things. I need to um, continue working on um, our Prometheus monitoring. In this case, the monitoring of our Prometheus monitoring, because who's watching the watchers? Uh, I need to make sure that once we switch to Prometheus as our main monitoring system, um, we can be sure that the monitoring system is actually um, working. And um, so I'm going to try and uh, implement a heartbeat mechanism where um, an external monitoring system or service, um, in our case that's going to be iAlert, um, will get heartbeat uh, information, continuous heartbeat, uh, heartbeat information from our Prometheus instance and will alert us once these heartbeats stop. And um, yeah, that's the first thing that I need to do. Then I might be working on my Linux course. I need to uh, get ahead with uh, making slides for uh, the upcoming chapters. And um, there's going to be a lecture stream on uh, Thursday afternoon. The next chapters in the Linux administration master course. The uh, Linux dash course command will get you uh, more details to that if you're not familiar. And um, so, uh, good day to you, Division by Zero. Hello. Um, yeah, so um, there are a few things that I'd like to get done today and uh, we'll do it one at a time and uh, see where we end up. Today's uh, a day where I spend a lot of time in front of camera because tonight we are also going to have our Linux course group call where people can uh, drop in and ask questions. And uh, we'll see that might actually turn into a live stream I haven't decided yet. Uh, maybe I switch up things a bit because I'm uh, uh, rethinking my approach in this course, how I teach it and uh, how I divide my time in it. And um, there might be some last minute changes, but I'm not quite sure yet. All right, so let's get going and um, let's see how we get, can get monitoring for our monitoring. As always, let's not make this a one-sided monologue on my side. Um, pop into chat whenever you like. And if there's something that you'd like to ask, to comment or to share, that's uh, exactly what chat is for. All right, here we are right in my uh, current um, GitLab issue that I'm working on. And let me get that on my main scr screen as well. Uh, where are we? That's this one here. Amazing. Thanks again, Exegete, for 
sharing the uh, source projector with me that uh, makes a tremendous change. Okay, so here we are. And I guess I could go right ahead and start uh, researching what, um, how we could actually implement that heartbeat. So maybe let's start with um, the current iAlert documentation on that. So let's go to iAlert.com. And I guess that's resources, isn't it? Uh, documentation. I think... Well, if I have the choice of rejecting all cookies, I'll choose that. So... There is no subdivision for the different services, so I'll have to look that up differently. Are we talking about metrics here? No. Well, import metric from Prometheus. Oh, that's metrics monitoring, actually. Oh, I, I don't think I was aware that uh, Eilat could actually ingest metrics from Prometheus, but that's amazing. That might be used in the future. So let's see, REST API. Ah, here we go, integrations. So let's see. P like Prometheus integration. We already have a, an alert source in place. And here, what if my internet connection is interrupted? Are the alerts generated in Prometheus lost? No, alerts are not lost. The alert manager has a retry mechanism. In addition, we recommend that you monitor your internet connection with an external monitoring system. For example, using iAlert's heartbeat feature. See here for our Prometheus heartbeat example. Let's maybe start with the general information on the heartbeat feature and then continue the heartbeat example. I already looked at that example. But, uh, yeah, we don't have to find out how this actually works. Where does the heartbeat come from? That's my main question here. Choose heartbeat as an alert source and configure the settings to your liking. With heartbeat alert sources, you may additionally choose an interval in which a ping, HTTP request, of your service, device or workflow is expected. In case the ping is not received, an alert will be created. Yeah, that's the general de definition of a heartbeat service. But how do I do this heartbeat? Okay, so it branches into the Prometheus heartbeat example. That's the alert manager.yaml, where we simply in install a new receiver for the heartbeat. And there's a route for this receiver. Maybe I overlooked something here. There's this route for the receiver for an alert name iAlert with a repeat interval of one minute. And that repeat interval, that looks like a heartbeat. But how do we trigger this alert name? CLI heartbeat examples. Simple heartbeat call using curl. Oh, maybe that's the... Uh, nope. Let's not get distracted. Well, that, that would be, um, I guess, a workaround. I could actually simply um, set up a cron job that uh, pings the iAlert heartbeat URL on a uh, by minute basis 
So that would be our fallback. But let's find out about this repeat interval. Prometheus repeat interval. How long to wait before sending a notification again if it has already been sent successfully for an alert? Okay. That means we could at least set up a dummy alert that triggers immediately whenever Prometheus is up and we'll route that to our heartbeat receiver and let it repeat on a by minute interval. Maybe that's exactly what this alert name here is referring to. It's just not uh, mentioned. So if I go back to Prometheus integration, let's see. Here they set up the receiver, the iLert webhook receiver. yet sure how this is actually meant to work. Let's see if there is some other mention on the web for that. Prometheus heart beat configuration. Not sure if instrumentation will be the right context. Yeah, that's more if you want to instrument your own software for Prometheus. That second result is exactly what we are doing at the moment. Let's see what this is. Heartbeat logging in Logit. No, that's actually... That's actual heartbeat okay no that's not what i want then there is prometheus heartbeat metrics i want to track the current internet availability of hardware that might move around the world with prometheus mm, might be at least a bit of inspiration let's see um i guess that Yeah, the alert side, the, the, the alert side, I think is is already covered. We have a source for that in place, but that source needs to get a continuous heartbeat, and um, the uh, question is, how do we get that? What does generate this uh, heartbeat? That's the main question here.
Yes, as I said, I, uh, as a fallback, I can always do a curl call from a cron job. But that wouldn't uh, exactly cover that uh, Prometheus is online. That would mean the Prometheus machine might be online, but um, Prometheus might be stopped or crashed or something. So I would like to have Prometheus generate that heartbeat. That Only that would be uh, the uh, correct way to do things. And the question is, how do I make Prometheus generate that heartbeat? And I think there's probably not, uh, that, not no such feature built into Prometheus, but I can, of course, always trigger an always um, triggering uh, alert. If you have multiple Prometheus nodes, you need multiple uh, heartbeats uh, with uh, distinct URLs on the Eilar side. So, I guess... How Kubernetes does this kind of heartbeat? You mean to see which of its nodes are online? A check that does the curl call would probably work, but uh, that introduces a lot of latency and I'd like to avoid that. Um, I'd like checks to only take milliseconds, um, otherwise the uh, whole um, uh, the the uh, check um, we might uh, uh, make the uh, check cycle much longer, and uh, that'll uh, prevent scalability. So we'll do it um, the way I uh, first thought. Kubernetes lets you specify a command to run, and if that command succeeds, it marks the pod healthy. Yeah. If it fails for too long, it marks the pod unhealthy and automatically tries to replace it. Yeah, yeah, uh, but that's um, built right into Kubernetes and the uh, API backplane. Uh, that doesn't really um, give me any indication how I might do that with Prometheus. Because what you describe, yeah, it, it does work, but um, it's completely independent of Prometheus, and that's how it should be. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually uh, create an alert that triggers immediately. So I'll simply um, check one of the pro internal Prometheus metrics, and I'll try to find an, an, an elegant one. And um, instead of being happy that the metric is OK, I'll actually build an alert that triggers on this OK metric. And then I let it repeat. Um, we could actually do combine um, two things that I just mentioned. And um, we'll check. That's. I think I like this idea. We'll check how long the uh, how long it takes prometheus to run through all checks and we check if uh, that is below a threshold we'd like it to be and if it's beyond that threshold above that th threshold then um as long as it's below that threshold, we'll keep triggering um, an alert. So if everything is okay, we keep triggering the alert. And if things um, start um, running out of uh, time, then we'll um, stop the heartbeat and uh, get an alert. Oh, yeah, that, that's exactly uh, the issue, Exegete. Um, 
that's how I understood it uh, uh, at first myself. But um, what iLert does with their um, heartbeat checks is just offer an additional webhook that will trigger an alert if the heartbeat doesn't come in anymore. So they are usual. Um, so iAlert is an alerting um, platform. Maybe I should have mentioned that before. It's uh, similar to PagerDuty. And um, normally these services have webhooks where um, you can send your alerts to and um, if an alert comes in then um, it gets triggered and uh, uh, people get notified um, some way or, or another. Um, these heartbeat webhooks are different. Uh, they require constant pings to come in and you can then uh, define when an alert is triggered for example if this ping has uh, been missing for a minute or five minutes or something like that but they don't actively ping any service so it's not that they try um, to reach um, something and um, uh, alert you if, if they can't because that way i think they would build a monitoring system instead of an alerting system if you know what I mean um, and that way the e can they can uh, focus on being an alerting system but you have to do the monitoring and in this case you have to also provide the heartbeat exactly you can't invert the source they expect something to come in and it's your problem how you manage to do that and uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, let me see uh, if I can find out the um, actual Prometheus metrics. Um, internal Prometheus metrics. Um, I mean, I can always uh, try and uh, pick one myself. Mm, so let's go to from me. This not the production one. I'll. Try this on our testing one. And if I do a curl localhost 9090, isn't it? Metrics. It's not metrics, but something did answer. Spike design. These heartbeat. Expect a signal from something that usually can't be monitored externally. Cron jobs are the most common use case. Yep. With a cron job, it's it's pretty clear cut. A cron job, you can't ask a cron job if it was successful or not, or if it is uh, keeps executing in in the right uh, intervals. Um, uh, it's a little bit ambiguous in our case because we try to create a heartbeat for a service that can actually be monitored um, and that of course would always be um, the alternative we could actually use our external monitoring to try and reach um, our Prometheus server but that then might run into authentication issues and things like that, make things more complicated. Uh, I'd, I'd, I like, I'd like to try this. Oh, thank you, yeah. yeah. Um, since we uh, made this uh, available from the outside, we have to uh, include Prometheus and Alert Manager first. Yeah, I forgot about that. So here we have lots of uh, metrics. And uh, let's do a less and there is some kind of duration, I think, not the garbage collection duration. 
no other duration and lots of durations actually but nothing that's too interesting good lord For some reason, it's frozen. Just a second. that scene not updating anymore. Just a second. Yes, I have to Can disconnect that. Hmm. Apologize for the interruption. Um, there's group duration. Uh, I guess I better look that up. I'd like to find out how long it took Prometheus to run through all required checks.
maybe looking for Prometheus Health. Prometheus Health. Total. Not sure what the best keywords would be to look for this. I guess maybe Prometheus Health and Total Time in quotes. HTTP requests total. No, that's not it. that hard do I have to sift through checks myself let's take a look at total whatever that will give us that's uh, contract not interested uh i guess i could start filtering by prometheus underscore and i guess that would be a good start grab prometheus and here we have hp Requests total, notifications dropped total. Target scrape pool. That, I think that's uh, what we're talking about. How long does it take to scrape all targets? Target scrapes exceeded body size, those are all zero. So let's narrow this down to the scrape metrics. Scrape pool. Most of these are zero or not a number. I think we're talking about target sync length seconds count. No, I don't think so. But with Scrape, I have something that I can actually search for. So, t um... I guess it's scrape cycle, so what I should be looking for is Prometheus scrape 
cycle duration. Scrape duration seconds metric. That's, I think, what we are looking for. Scrape duration. There isn't one. That's strange. Scrape duration seconds. Keyboard. My current keyboard is a Korn. Ergonomic split keyboard with uh, two six by three halves and three thumb keys. And as usual, the outer column is disabled, so it's actually a five by three plus three layout. And the um, keycap set is GMK Cafe. And that's something that I urgently needed uh, during my lunch break. So uh, I confused my uh, baristas at uh, Starbucks by not actually ordering a chai tea latte, but a latte instead. The person that was preparing the drinks uh, actually came came back and uh, asked for confirmation that it's actually meant to be a latte and not a chai tea latte. But uh, since I'm going to be uh, in front of a camera until uh, later at night today, um, yeah, I guess I can use the caffeine. So GMK Cafe is the perfect uh, keycap set for a day like this. So I guess um, scrape duration seconds is something that I can query. Or even sum up. Vegetarian cheeseburger with bacon and egg on it. They always come back to ask if I want the bacon. <laughs> but that's actually playing tricks on people. I just ordered uh, a very innocent uh, grande latte. But uh, people are so used to me ordering a chai tea latte that I don't actually have to order. I simply need to, uh, to nod and, and that's that. Well, yeah, that, that does make sense if you have goat that you can't have beef, but why don't you tell them exactly that? Instead, you order a vegetarian meal with non-vegetarian stuff. It might be more efficient in terms of uh, verbalization, <laughs> but... can't deny that it, that you are actively confusing people and then it's not efficient anymore okay <laughs> <laughs> 
I need to try that once. I need to think. Maybe I'll order a, a Big Mac, but with uh, a vegetarian patty. Which would probably be a Mac plant, so... All right, so uh, let me think. We have this scrape duration seconds, and uh, I think oh, that's a node. Oh, that's a node um, exporter. Of course, scraping is for for node for exporters, and uh, so that's a node exporter metric where you get the scrape duration um, back from each node or instance. And that's why it's job node. That's the node exporter job in this case. And uh, yeah, you can sum that up. Um, but um, I don't think it's a Magrib. No, no, I don't really think that. Not even sure if Magrib is uh, still available over here. Yeah, it's a query and uh, it's, it's based on uh, the um, node exporter metrics. And I, I was looking for something that uh, is uh, part of the local Prometheus metrics. So let's go back to the drawing board and take a look at these metrics. If there is something that stands out that would um, would be a good choice for creating a fake alert. really hard to see the forest for the trees here. <laughs> oh, that's also non obvious. So something like Prometheus uptime or something. Uptime, no. Something really obvious. TSDB, lots of TSDBD stuff, of course. Web Federation. Is there an error count? Web Federation errors. That's all. No Prometheus notification errors. I think I know what uh, query you are referring to, and I... Aren't we already even monitoring that? At least I, I did use it to, to get a few uh, Let's see. Um, in the getting started... What do you mean? 
Prometheus getting started. Using the expression browser. this target interval length time between target scrapes target interval length seconds target interval length seconds that yeah we could actually that is pretty much what I was looking for target interval length seconds and uh, we get different quantiles Seconds. Is that the actual interval we are running? Um, our targets? Because that's pretty much 10 seconds. But if we measure 5 seconds, it's also 5 seconds. So I'm not really sure what that actually means. Actual intervals between scrapes. Oh, I guess uh, for checks that have an interval of 10 seconds, uh, most of them are actually running every 10 seconds. And then we, we seem to have uh, five seconds as well. And for this interval, um, we are, are um, actually yeah, pretty much at five seconds. So um, uh, that does make sense. So we are on the spot here and if that starts to uh, deviate if our 10 second interval becomes something like uh, 12 seconds or something then we know we are running out of uh, yeah we're running over over time basically uh, that's almost a bit too complicated to to query though um But, yeah, I guess something like this Prometheus, uh, the 90% quantile, should be less than 11 seconds. Something like that. Or 10.5, yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's see. Dataworks, Prometheus rules. Which one should I take? Uh, 
use the instance down one. Oh, let's stay here. Let's open up a new shell. Data bags, beneath these rules. So, copy instance down to heartbeat.json. Expression would be this less than ten point five uh, type. I'm not sure if we need an, a group. No, that's just going to be the Prometheus server itself. And if we are above that for, let's say, so uh, the the tricky thing is that we need to uh, think uh, in a bizarro way because. Um, uh, that expression actually means things are okay. Our 10 second interval um, is less, is b about 10 seconds. And uh, and if that's the case, if everything is okay for one minute, And then we'll need the uh, the repeat interval, but that's part of the route that we have to set up. And that should match think let's save that and we need is that part of the environment actually edit this uh, in private. So we need a receiver for heartbeats.
with our own API key. And that'll have <laughs> so where's our API key? Oh, I need to grab them from somewhere else. in alert. Wait, uh, a little bit of testing. That's going to be a heartbeat. So that source might actually start triggering while I'm working here. And Next is writes unrelated. I'd like to give another shout out to Entify.sh, ability to send anonymous push notifications to your phone. It's a free service, right? Uh, I haven't tried it yet, but uh, what makes you um, give another shout out? Uh, what exactly, why Why exactly would you recommend using it? Or what, what are you um, happy about with this specific service? Tell us a little bit more. So, uh, I've created the heartbeat receiver with our personal um, URL and I added a root that matches the heartbeat severity 
sorry, sends that to the heartbeat receiver and has a repeat interval of one minute. Actually, we don't really need a, a repeat interval if we keep triggering this alert. I think I'll make it less complicated. The expression that I'm going to use is, will simply be... Oops. What did I do wrong here? Um, what's going on? Oh, we have nested quotes in here. Okay. That was bound to break anyway. Um, yeah, I'd like to simply say uh, one equals one. If reality is, has been existing for more than one minute, then we'll create a heartbeat. That'll trigger one alert. That's one thing, and I'll actually um... oh thanks, thanks for the hint. And this group, I need to find out what the possible group could be, or if that even is necessary. The thing is, I don't want... Uh, this isn't even related to any node. It just means that uh, Prometheus itself... Um, uh, why can't they simply add an example how to set this up? I'm wrecking my head here and I'm wasting a lot of time. I think you're confusing what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to uh, um, monitor any node. I just want to see that uh, Prometheus itself, not node exporter, Prometheus, the instance that does all the evaluation and stuff, is still alive. <laughs> this is annoying. It's not a heartbeat for all our nodes, it's just a heartbeat for the Prometheus server itself. Exactly. Because the already existing instance down um, rule already uh, covers uh, checking if uh, nodes are alive. And now I need to be sure that the Prometheus server that monitors the nodes is alive. Prometheus 
check. Uh. This shouldn't take this long. Engineering at HelloFresh. That's interesting. Uh, let's get this huge footer out of the way. And let's get rid of that too. They have Watchdog Vector 1, whatever that means, but uh, um, that might be actually... Um, this is an alert meant to ensure that the entire alerting pipeline is functional. This alert is always firing, therefore it should always be firing in Alert Manager and always fire against a receiver. There are integrations with various notification mechanisms that send a notification when this alert is not firing. For example, the Deadman Snitch integration in PagerDuty. Okay. Okay, um, that's exactly what I want to do. And Watchdog is a nice name as well. Um, we then create a heartbeat in Ops Genie for each watchdog alert, and we are done. Yeah, they might not be done because their infrastructure is a little bit more complex than ours, but this is exactly what I'd like to see. Uh, I'm curious what vector of one means. It has a severity of none. And maybe we should... Yeah, severity none is, is probably right. I shouldn't um, abuse the severity label for something like heartbeat. Um, so we'll set it to severity none and um, another category to differentiate that it's not going to uh, alert anyone. Um, so let's see. There is a caveat with the previous approach. We have properly implemented the deadman switch for all of our Prometheus installations. However, Alert Manager is a shared component in our case. Okay, that's not the case for us. That means if Alert Manager goes down, our on-call responders will receive 14 different alerts that Prometheus is down, since all of our obscene heartbeats will start paging. Yeah, so the, their Alert Manager is a single point of failure, in other words. Version 2 of our solution would be to, to transform the deadman switch alert to be a catch-all alert. It will become more abstract and high level. Um, okay, I think this is not an, uh, of any relevance for me anymore. This will return the number of our Prometheus installations. So, da, 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 da. Okay, no, no, that's not relevant anymore. So let's... If they can use Vector1 as a watchdog. Oh, the helm chart even comes with a pre-built alert. So that's already in the Prometheus helm chart? One more reason to use it. Yeah, system D timer service that runs every 30 seconds is basically the same as my idea of setting up a cron job, but again, cron doesn't know if Prometheus is up or not. It just knows that it, the machine it's running on is up. So it's not exactly as precise I would uh, like as I want it to be. Um, <laughs> let's find out what a vector is in Prometheus. Vector with S scholar returned the scholar S as a vector with no labels. Okay. No idea why that would be a watchdog, but okay.
maybe Prometheus Watchdog. Maybe there's some more. This seems to be even mentioned. Okay. Yeah. So I can simply root on the alert name and so we don't have to abuse the severity okay in other words we'll call this uh, alert heartbeat type is an alert group doesn't really apply we'll use a vector one as the expression which is apparently true if that's the case for one minute, we'll trigger an alert with severity none. And that's that. A generic username. Hey, welcome to the stack. What is the Prometheus running on? VM or container? Uh, in our ca uh, case, it's a uh, cloud instance. So yeah, technically it's a VM. Okay, and uh, I'll go and change our alert manager setup. That's in data, but no, that's in environments. Testing. And we'll match on alert name heartbeat that goes through the receiver alert heartbeat yeah it's not kubernetes so uh, um, that might simplify things because uh, it they might already be in place but um, yeah I think we've we've now found a proper solution uh, I root all alert no all heartbeat alerts to I alert uh, heartbeat and uh, we only have the URL in here and now we also need to add the uh, wait uh, are we talking is this the I alert setup yeah uh, send result true and the root needs a repeat interval of one minute. Okay, send resolved true, even though it's never going to resolve, I guess. Okay. So, this needs send resolved true. And the root needs. and repeat is it send repeat no repeat interval okay repeat interval one minute okay so let me think how to deploy this properly We'll first deploy the alert. That'll allow us to see in Alert Manager that the alert actually triggers. And then we'll um, add the uh, alert routing, which then should connect our Prometheus to alert. 
So let's do this first. I'll deploy the heartbeat. That's okay. Mm. Now, let me quickly check in our alert instance. There isn't any alert yet. And I wonder why that's the case. How is this new testing heartbeat not triggering? Because we are not sending any alert yet. Escalation rules immediately after an alert is created. By an alert source using this escalation policy. Yeah, okay. That's the escalation policy, but how about the alert source? This is all very confusing. Status unknown. Maybe we'll first have to reach a stable state where we actually are sending alerts and then or sending pings and if these pings then start cutting out then we'll get something like that so yeah that means i need to wait for the alert to be deployed about to run in a few minutes. Let's force it. alert should be in place. Now let's see if it's actually triggering. Okay. No alert so far. No, of course it can't there can't be any alerts, right? Because we're not triggering them. But uh, how about Prometheus? Prometheus?
It doesn't actually list my new heartbeat alert. How can that be? Mm. I did upload it. Give me a second to check and watch. Uh, Prometheus runes.yaml Oh, I deleted the, the group. And that removed it. So uh, uh, without a group it won't, in, won't be installed. actually be more complicated than I expected. Uh, getting it into my own configuration here. Now I actually have to look up how these alert groups work. Grouping. Grouping categorizes alerts of similar nature into a single notification. This is especially useful during larger outages when many... Okay. Okay, that's something we have to keep in mind with our other alerts as well. How we group them. I guess it makes sense to give the uh, heartbeat a group named Prometheus, for example. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, uh, guess that's here. Let me just take a look at the instance down. There we have the, its own group. And we call that group Prometheus. Or we call it even heartbeat. Why not? Well, we have the heartbeat alerts. Hmm. Grouped. Oh, let's call it Prometheus. I think that makes sense. Mm, did we have that? Yeah, it's the third attribute. time in run oh yeah okay anyway now let me take a look at the configuration again we have the all nodes group That's still all there is. Do we have to define these groups elsewhere? I think I know why. Yeah, let's see.
yeah, there's Prometheus rule groups that we have to define. Mm. Groups. Yeah, and here we have the all nodes group definition. That needs to be the first thing. So I'll copy all nodes to... What did we use? Prometheus. And let me see. Is there something in there that shouldn't be shared? No, not at all. So... All that's def defined here is uh, the group name and the interval. And this, uh, in our case, could very well be 60 seconds. And you know what? In this case, I actually call it heartbeat. That way, we don't limit ourselves with the 60 second interval. So I'll have to rename that into heartbeat.json. I'll upload that. Prometheus rule groups heartbeat.json. Now let's go back to the Prometheus rules themselves and I guess I should also rename that a little bit better. We call it Prometheus Heartbeat. That's in the Heartbeat group. rename this to Prometheus Heartbeat. And let's upload that. Prometheus Rules. Prometheus Heartbeat. And we'll have to uh, remove the um, other definition. Data bank, delete Prometheus rules heartbeat. Okay. Now we should be able to uh, get this installed. Sorry. Okay. Let me take a look. We have the all nodes group. And we have a heartbeat group that triggers every 60 seconds. Vector one for one minute. Severity none. Prometheus Heartbeat. Yep, that alert is in place. And that means we should probably already have an alert visible in Prometheus. Let me just check that. Yes, there is a Prometheus Heartbeat alert.
severity none. And now we need to route that to iAlert. So I need to change our Prometheus server configuration with the uh, alert rules. Um, and that means... Uh, going here. Let's see. We have... Alert heartbeat, repeat interval every minute, going to alert alerts, no, going to alert heartbeat, and uh, that's syntactically wrong here. Uh, we have a webhook and uh, the URL. Let's save that. And upload that. And now I can go to Prometheus server again. And run Chef again to get it installed. That's that. Now I need to check the configuration of Prometheus itself. Which means that's uh, Prometheus, Prometheus.yaml. Alerting. Let's see. So, uh, no, it's the alert manager configuration. Alert Manager has a root, uh, multiple roots actually. Severity page goes to alerts, alert name heartbeat. That's wrong, that needs to be Prometheus heartbeat. And that goes to iAlert heartbeat. Has a repeat interval of one minute and down there there's iAlert heartbeat with our URL and send resolved true. So we just need to change the alert name now. I need to fix that. Uh, up here, I guess, somewhere. Yep, alert name is from me. Yes, underscore heartbeat. Let's upload that to the chef server. Run chef again. configuration file uh, match alert name Prometheus heartbeat goes to alert heartbeat and that's down to find down there with its own heartbeats URL that seems to be okay okay so if I reload this heartbeat definition it says healthy nice So Prometheus will have a continuously pending alert here. Well, it's actually not uh, pending anymore. It's now firing, which is which it is supposed to be, of course. Oh yes, for, uh, before it was pending because the first minute wasn't over, because I uh, had defined that um, alert to trigger after a minute. But when uh, it kept firing after a minute, for the second minute, um, then uh, now it's firing actually and that means it sends a, an alert to the heartbeat endpoint of iAlert so that is healthy now 
So let's find out what happens if I uh, switch off Prometheus. And that's something that, of course, I will share with you. So let's do a uh, system control stop Prometheus. System control status Prometheus. So it should be stopped for a few minutes until, I guess, a chef runs again and uh, will automatically restore it to good health. But I th I'd assume that um, we'll have enough time for it to see triggering an alert. Mm -hmm. I guess I need to stay on my iLert page now and keep reloading from time to time. Oh, it says when it received its last ping. Uh, that's That was 15.56. That's still this minute. Oh, and it says ping expected until in 15 minutes because I had defined the heartbeat interval on iAlert's side for 15 minutes. And for the testing server, that's okay. So we won't actually see an alert in iAlert, but I should be able to see that the... Uh, ping... keeps missing. So the heartbeat doesn't actually... Oh! There was a ping, so I guess uh, Chef got in the way. Let me see about that, so... Prometheus. No, it's still dead. gremlins but real ones for now real ones now um how has there been a ping at exactly 1558 oh i know i know i know it's not prometheus uh, <laughs> it's not prometheus that sends the alert it's alert manager so I guess I should have stopped Alert Manager instead of Prometheus. Well, that does make sense. Uh, system control... Start Prometheus. And yeah, I guess I don't have to try that. Uh, if, I, if I shut down Alert Manager, we won't receive a ping. I mean, that's not something that... Should surprise me. No, I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay, so that's uh, this uh, problem uh, solved in the sense that I know now what to do in production. I just need to repeat the same thing that I built now for our testing environment with another heartbeat endpoint at iAlert that actually does send out pages and uh, alert people. And um, that's that. Looks like uh, Alert Manager keeps sending out the uh, alerts on the minute. No, not exactly. It's 15.59 the last time.
Can any of this be done with internet as code, uh, uh, infrastructure as code? Um, well, it basically is done as infrastructure as code because um, uh, I just had to make um, a definition for our uh, chef-based um, infrastructure as code, where I simply defined the Prometheus heartbeat as a dummy alert. So that's a JSON file that gets fed into our uh, Chef server. And Chef then generates the necessary Prometheus or Alert Manager configuration from this information. So it's basically the um, Prometheus configuration in JSON format. Um, and Chef basically turns that into YAML. Um, together with all the other alert definitions that we are um, that we've also defined in this directory here so there are the different uh, checks already and uh, so it is actual uh, infrastructure as code the, the code itself is um, our Prometheus cookbooks that set up all this configuration and that they um, then simply pull in these uh, JSON documents to actually create the alert manager.yaml and the prometheus.yaml. So um, all these JSON files get aggregated and turned into a single YAML file for Prometheus or for our, uh, alert manager in this case. And then there's also um, environment specific configuration. That's where I uh, configured the routing for these alerts. Because, of course, for our testing environment, I need to um, send all these um, heartbeat alerts to the testing endpoint on iAlert that doesn't actually alert anyone. Um, and if when I repeat this for our production infrastructure, then I uh, need to have the same um, configuration again in the production environment. Um, and the only difference is going to be the URL um, because um, we need a production endpoint on the side of iLert and uh, that endpoint then needs to be connected to an actual escalation policy where people get um, alerted even if it's uh, late at night. And um, I'll probably also uh, lower the uh, alerting threshold for that heartbeat endpoint down from 15 minutes to something like five minutes, I guess. If Prometheus is down for more than five minutes, um, we probably should know. Maybe 10 minutes, I'm not sure yet. We'll, we'll discuss this on the team. Um, uh, but something in, in that uh, ballpark, uh, five to 10 minutes. Um, we shouldn't fly blind for more than, I guess, five minutes. Uh, I mean, if, if Prometheus is, say, if there is a network uh, hiccup and Prometheus can't send a heartbeat for five minutes that might still be okay or if there is an issue on on the side of of Eilert or so um but uh if if heartbeat uh keeps missing for more than five minutes i guess uh, we should alert someone to at least look after things and see if if there is something serious going on does that answer your question Or did I uh, misinterpret your, your question, Exegeet? <laughs> He's trying to get me into a recursion. I still have other things to do. Longest Twitch stream ever. And probably most expensive one too. <laughs> If I keep monitoring monitoring systems, I would assume that gets boring for you as well, quickly. But yeah, you're right. I mean, uh, there's always who's watching the watchers, right? But I think um, we're good now. We have a monitoring system and we are actually monitoring the monitoring system. I mean, I could have done something um, that I thought of um, in, uh, at the beginning of the stream. Uh, we also have external um, uh, monitoring in place because you, 
always need to rely on on someone um, external to your infrastructure anyway. So we have uh, a monitoring system, uh, monitoring service similar uh, to Pingdom um, that um, monitors crucial infrastructure. Uh, it also does monitor um, SSL certificates from the outside, for example, things like that. And I simply could have added uh, Prometheus to that um, monitoring system, and maybe I'll even do that uh, additionally. Um, um, if it's possible to give it uh, HTTP authentication credentials, then it can e even uh, check if the response uh, does actually have um, valid data. So we could actually uh, monitor the actual metrics endpoint uh, of uh, Prometheus. Um, and see if it has um, a keyword in there that needs to be in there. That's something we could do as well. But I simply was curious how these heartbeat endpoints at iLert actually work. And um, as we've seen earlier in in, in, um, in my web search, uh, PagerDuty has um, something similar with the uh, Deadman Snitch integration. Um, where you can actually um, monitor cron jobs and things like that. So uh, these services are pretty similar, and um, we are simply uh, um, going to switch from PagerDuty to iAlert because uh, iAlert is European-based. It's actually based in Germany, so right um, in our vicinity, and especially in the vicinity of our servers, which all um, run in Germany anyway. Um, so, uh, and it's uh, quite a bit cheaper, to be honest. Um, iAlert pretty much covers the same basic functionality as PagerDuty. PagerDuty might have more um, enterprise level features and we are simply not uh, interested in them. And so I'm, I don't see why we should be paying for them. Um, and that's why I'm dabbling with uh, iAlert here. Okay. So what do I have to do? Let me uh, reflect uh, quickly. I'll have to create a production alert route similar to the one I've built for testing. Uh, the heartbeat alert has actually already been deployed to our production uh, Prometheus because um, those are identical in, in terms of setup. So there should already be a, an alert firing on our production Prometheus as well. It just doesn't get rooted anywhere. So let me quickly check that. Um, that's something that I'm simply curious about. So that's um, Prometheus production. Do I already have a bookmark for yeah, Of course I have a bookmark for that. Uh, Prometheus. Need a password, so let's see. Oh, wait. Um, production. There we go. Let's see. Alerts. Yes, there's already a Prometheus heartbeat uh, alert firing. It just doesn't go anywhere. So all I have to do is to um, set up another heartbeat endpoint on iLert and then extend our production configuration to serve this endpoint. And that's that. So that's five more minutes that I'll have to invest later. And then uh, that task is going to be done. Very nice. Still took more time than I would have liked. Alright folks, I guess I'll take a short break and then I'll be back with um, probably some uh, Linux administration course material work. But we'll see about that. See you in a minute.
Hello, DevOps friends, I'm back. So, let's see. Um, yeah, next thing I'd like to do is uh, do a little bit of work on my uh, Linux administration course materials. And uh, for that, I'll need to set up a few things. So, if you're interested, I have a Linux administration master course uh, that's already running, but uh, there will be more of those uh, in the future. And um, we're going to cover all topics that are relevant for Linux system administrators and people who want to be one. Um, starting from uh, the basic history and philosophy of uh, Linux, down to uh, Linux in the cloud, everything in between. Linux networking, Linux uh, shell, um, all these kinds of stuff um, we'll be covering. And um, so uh, that requires quite a bit of work on my side uh, for um, doing the weekly lectures. And um, I'll um, keep working on the Linux materials. until they're finished. So I'm always running a bit ahead of uh, what I'm lecturing and uh, building out slides and things like that. And so I'll do a little bit of that today. Uh, for that, I should be able to... Oh, ah, I had to reboot my computer earlier, so uh, that's actually not even launched yet. And why do I keep getting errors from NeoVim? In init.vim, in packages.lua, in editing Lua, there is a missing parenthesis, I guess. Okay. So let's start by fixing that. So let me... Oh, wrong. Yeah, I did make a change to editing.lua and... What's the issue here? Oh, I think I know what's missing here, but let's actually look that up. Um, that's uh, in wrapping.nvim. Uh, I guess I can reuse this tab. Wrapping.nvim. Yep, we are missing curly braces. I thought it would be the case. Uh, that's actually helpful because um, this is setting a specific um, setting if uh, NeoVim should um, use soft wrapping um, with markdown files and I'm uh, raising the probability or the, the threshold for that a little bit so to make it um, more likely that uh, NeoVim will use soft wrapping um, automatically. And if I switch to my Linux administration course website. Oh, we are again running out of file handles. That should actually have been resolved a long time ago. I'm not sure why this keeps repeating and regressing. That's also something that's annoying me. How does this always keep happening? Uh, that's your limit.
Yeah, that's much less than... There should be... Oh, my changes don't survive system upgrades. Huh? Is that the case? Uh, I don't have NVIM. No, I don't have NVIM on this level. I... So uh, that's in system D. Uh... User.conf. Uh, of course. No, it's still here. So my limits should be a lot higher than they are. Oh wait, they are in on the main system? So here we have 4 million open files as a hard limit and 16k as a soft limit. But that's actually not the same in here. Which is a container toolbox. So, huh. Okay, that's good to know. I'll have to research that, why the container toolbox doesn't have the same limits as the um, underlying system. Anyway, that shouldn't be a problem, he said. So, we are working on... Let's see, chapter 12 already has slides, so chapter 13 is next. So let me create a slides.md file, which will automatically be turned into a slide based on reveal.js. And uh, before we can do the slides, I'll have to add the uh, table of contents here. Uh, how do I play this? Mm. Guess I'll have to do a horizontal split here. And okay. Yeah, that that works. That works. Nice. So I have my course, my study material uh, on screen. I uh, for copyright reasons i can't show you that though but i can reveal that we are using the book using and administering linux by david both for our course and uh, in chapter 12 we are talking no are we it's chapter 13 yeah 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 i was just wondering how that works okay so let, let's go back to my editor here um so, as always, the chapter starts with the objectives. Then there's the art of problem solving. And I'm always amazed how Copilot already knows what we need. And now we have a sub section, the five steps of problem solving. Copilot really helps me not having to type a lot. Knowledge, observation, reasoning, action. Test or testing. 
And that's basically a cycle. Problem solving means you start with a basic knowledge, you observe how things work, you reason about what you've seen, uh, then you take action and uh, then test the outcome. And that then um, gives you feedback and you loop back onto observation. You obs have observed what the uh, test does, what the result was. The, you reason about that, take another action, and, and then it's a uh, repeating cycle. And all the time your knowledge increases, basically. Um, next section is system performance and problem solving. System performance and problem solving and in this uh, section we'll take a look at uh, basic uh, tools to um, observe uh, system performance for example using top or um, related tools like htop a top or b top or whatever top and for that, you need to have a basic understanding of things like uh, load averages. As opposed to CPU usage. That's the, wait, that's the summary section. We're getting too many levels deep, I'd say. Summary section. That would be level five. Mm, I don't like level five headings, but yeah, okay. And then there's the process list, process section. And here we'll focus on things things to look for with CPU usage then there are the memory statistics Wait, all these should be level 4. While well, this one is level 5. Because it's all nested on the top. So, the task list. Uh, then I, we have signals, because um, top then allows us to send signals to specific processes. And consistency. I'm not sure what that means in this context. I don't know it by... Uh, I didn't memorize that. So then um, we are still in on level 3. So this is sibling section to top with other top-like tools. And there's... Uh, H top, A top, and I might actually include B top as well. I'll have to take a look at uh, what A top uh, actually does. And then there's more tools. Uh, for example, memory tools. And tools that display disk I.O. statistics, things like VMstat, for example. Mm, I guess we're not back on... Level 3, like more tools. The slash proc file system. Uh, 
exploring hardware using tools like LSUSB, LSCPU, things like that. The nesting in these chapters is really hard to tell. So system performance and problem solving goes. Okay, that's strange. Uh, that means other top like tools is already level two. means more tools is also level two. Rock file system is level two. Exploring hardware is level two. And um, monitoring hardware temperatures is monitoring hardware temperatures is level two too. Monitoring hard drives in particular, then system statistics with SAR. Is SAR still a tool that gets used? Installation and configuration. Examining collected data and then we'll end with cleanup and a chapter summary and exercises at the end. So that's the outline or the table of contents and I'll simply use that to create my slide skeleton as well I don't need a parent here I don't need the chapter number and I don't need a description but the uh, web page should have a description um, which is basically this Chapter introduces methods and tools to examine system performance. So uh, these uh, slides should all have level two headings because otherwise the uh, font size will get, get um, smaller and smaller and that doesn't make sense because each of these sections needs to be a separate slide and so they need to be separated by uh, hyphens either two or three hyphens the main sections need to be dis uh, divided with three hyphens so we'll start with that and uh, that's basic vim usage i'll um uh, simply look for uh, lines that start with two hyphens and a space and I uh, proceed or prepend that with uh, three hyphens and then I'll insert two new lines which is um, uh, represented by control M and in order to um, insert such a control character I need to press control V first so control V control M control V control M that's the two um, new lines and then of course we'll need to restore the two um, uh, two hash signs with the space and we don't actually need the uh, global option here but uh, it doesn't hurt either 
And that precedes all level 2 um, headings with uh, three hyphens. And um, all others uh, are going to be subsections. So they'll be separated with two hyphens only. Uh, that's how reveal.js um, does these. Um, it, it basically has a 2D uh, navigation. Um, you go from main section to main section from left to right. And um, in the subsections you go down. And that's what's done with the two hyphens. So that's a little bit of an extension of the standard markdown syntax. Um, the standard markdown syntax also only knows three hyphens for a uh, separation rule. Um, and uh, uh, Reveal.js extends this a little bit. Now we need to um, change our regular expression here. I want to match three or more um, hash signs. That's, um, I'm, I'm doing that this way. And then we'll separate things only by uh, two hyphens and we'll turn everything into level two headings as well because I don't want to have any um, slides that have a uh, level four heading at the top which is uh, in a relatively tiny font so uh, we'll keep those two uh, side uh, two um, level two headings for all these slides in blanky hey welcome to the stack good to have you here hello there just got here is this some sort of presentation um, yes, um, I'm building a presentation for my Linux course. I'm um, doing the Linux administration master course at the moment. And uh, uh, since uh, I'll have to have a few more slides. And we're back. I think my OBS just crashed. That's, I haven't seen that in a while. But... Uh, Everything else seems to still work. All right. Uh, still, I have a little bit of... Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, let me get that right quickly. Me too. Start that as a... Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I think we were able to recover. Sorry about that. I was just about to explain that, uh, yeah, this is actually a presentation I'm working on. Um, it's a presentation I'm using in my um, Linux master course. So let's get you the detail information here and um, I'm uh, building the slide deck for chapter 13 which is about uh, problem solving I blame in Blanky that the the uh, stream crashed. All right, so uh, what I did was um, replace all chapter headings with level two chapter headings. The only difference is that the actual level two headings are separated using three hyphens, and the subheadings are separated with two hyphens. And um, yeah, I can show you how this looks like um, in the um, final slide. Um, I'm using Jekyll as my uh, static site generator here. Um, and why am I on... Uh, um, window number three. Maybe that um, open files issue was part in uh, OBS crashing. IDEs, right? Yeah. Maybe um, it's about these um, open files things. No, OBS runs on the main system because it runs from a flat pack. 
so it shouldn't be affected by the uh, file limit that only seems to be um, seems to apply to my container toolbox which I'm using in the terminal here well anyway maybe it was just a one-off thing mm, I wanted to show you uh, the final result so these are the slides that I just created tools for problem solving stuff 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 and then the headings so um, uh, in order to be able to show you that I'll have to run Jekyll And check it go boom too. Oh, we are running into serious problems, I guess. Yeah, fail to initialize iNotify. So we are actually running into some kind of icky stuff here. Mm, how do I fix this? I mean, I can always free up files. But maybe I should research why I'm suffering from this issue in the first place. I'll have to do that anyway to get my development environment working. But yeah, um, maybe let's try and free up a little bit. Can always quit Vim here. And do I have Vim open in one of these here? No, I don't. So, maybe I'm able to run Jekyll now. Yeah, okay. That did the trick. And that means I should be able to get localhost 4000. On screen. Yep. So, that's that. And let's go to part 1, chapter 13, tools for problem solving. That's the page with... Um, uh, actual headings as you can see these are different level headings here uh, and down here is the link to the auto generated slides and if i open those then we'll get the um, final um, presentation and i ca can go left and right as you can see uh, down here and as soon as we are reaching um, a topic that um, has subtopics um, then you'll see that we can also go down. Uh, now we have a arrow pointing down here, and these are the subheadings, but uh, they'll still have um, headings of the same size because I'm using level two headings everywhere. So um, those don't get tinier and tinier. I made that mistake in earlier slide decks where when we were on a level four slide, the... the um, uh, Heading would only be uh, half the size it is here, so uh, that doesn't really help readability, and and <laughs> it's no use being able to tell uh, which heading this is anyway, because um, these slides are used in a different way than the headings on the page, I guess. So yeah, um, um, so all you, I, I have to do is maintain a markdown file, and Jekyll turns it into this nice, um, nicely formatted slide deck automatically. Is there a way to list which apps have a lot of open file handles? Yes. Um, I guess that <laughs> fits the um, uh, topic here in terms of tools for problem solving. Uh, the tool in this case would be LSOF, uh, the List Open Files tool. Um, that gives you a, a huge list of open files. So you have to process that list down and group. Um, entries and count entries for um, because uh, it lists all open files so if a, a, a if a process has a thousand open files you get a list of thousand files um, and you have to aggregate uh, these um, uh, open files to then uh, in the end get uh, a uh, breakdown which process aka which um, uh, application has how many files open My main problem is that um, the open files limits in my container toolbox are different from my open file limits um, I have on the system level. I'm running Fedora Silverblue on my desktop here. And um, that means um, 
in, in such an immutable Linux system, you don't install everything on the um, main system. Uh, you keep the main system uh, mostly down to what you actually need to start your desktop environment. And once that's done, um, you should have um, your graphical applications installed from Flatpaks and your command line commands um, installed in uh, containers and uh, the toolbox and distrobox um, solutions are both great to get um, uh, container environments in which you can actually do work because both of them um, manage tight integration with the main system. So if you s simply spin up a Linux container right from uh, say Ubuntu or something, um, then um, you're pretty limited. You are basically running in your own self-contained system, but you don't have your um, home directory. You don't have access to specific devices and things like that. So it's really, really isolated and makes uh, development hard. While um, Container Toolbox, for example, has great integration with the main system and it feels like you are actually working on the main system. With the exception of open files limits, apparently. Um, but um, uh, you have access to the uh, graphical desktop. You can, for example, launch a graphical application inside the uh, toolbox container and it, it'll still show on your screen um, because all the necessary sockets and environment variables and so on get automatically passed into the toolbox container. So that's great about um, uh, container toolbox there. And um, I guess I should actually try and find out what is the problem. So um, why don't I clean up here? I don't need these Prometheus things anymore. And so let let you show let me show you what I'm talking about with Container Toolbox. So ContainerToolbox.org, ContainerToolBX.org is uh, what I'm talking about. Um, and uh, so if I spin up a, um, let's go out of here. So now I'm in a genuine, genuine terminal on my main machine. And all I do is uh, run toolbox enter. And then uh, I'm inside the toolbox container. But uh, I still have everything in my home that's in my home directory because that gets mounted into this container as a volume. Uh, other things like var run get mounted as a volume as well. So I have actual access to the um, uh, to sockets and things like that. And uh, Toolbox does everything uh, for you there. But for some reason, um, it doesn't do the uh, actual hard limits or the the, the um, file descriptor limits so if i do a uh, dash n here inside the toolbox we are limited to uh, one million and if i spin up a new terminal which um, will not start in a toolbox container and i do u limit dash n in here and as you can see i even uh, have my uh, shell history because um, that's shared between the container and the um, hardware system as well. Here we only have uh, a limit of uh, 16K. However, the hard limit is uh, 4 million. And if I go back into the um, container toolbox, here's the hard limit at 1 million. And that might apparently be too little. So what I need to find out is... Um, Is there an issue with file limits? So where's the GitHub for this? Uh... So open files. Permission denied. Uh, 
Maybe I should search for U limit. That'll probably catch it. Not many open issues to that. But 17 closed ones. Um, let's see. These are very basic issues. Here. Q limit dash n is too low inside toolbox and can't be changed. That's pretty old. Hard limit inside the container being set to the soft limit of the host. I don't think that's even the case in uh, for us, is it? Is it? Let's check that again. Um, if I the host, let's take a look at the soft limit. Soft limit is 16k. Hard limit is 4 gig. No, 4 meg, of course, 4 meg. And here we have uh, both soft and hard limit at one meg. Mm -hmm. One meg. The problem might actually be that my toolbox is older than my change to the uh, system limits. I raised the system limits after creating my toolbox, so um, maybe I'll have to recreate my toolbox, which is going to be a pain in the ass. I've only just recently started automating my uh, development setup using Ansible, so I might have to uh, expedite that. You'd need Podman 1.5 to have the U-limits passed through. I'm pretty sure we are running Podman 1.5 by now. There has already so this was referenced three weeks ago. Test resource limits. Following cards must be noted. Potman sets the cool toolbox containers soft limit for the maximum number of open file scripts to the host's hard limit. Which is often greater than a host's soft limit. Yeah, that does make sense, doesn't it? U limit options don't work on Fedora 38 because the corresponding resource arguments for Qatar limit are absent from the operating system. These are R limit, blah, blah, blah. Okay. <laughs> Had coffee for lunch and I'm still tired. And after the stream, I'm going to have to do a 5k walk. Already wearing my exercise pants. That'll either destroy me completely, or it'll give me another boost. So... Is there a way to boost our toolbox container after the fact, or do I need to create a new one? Let's do an experiment. 
and create a new toolbox and let me see how the U limits behave in there. Do we have multiple toolboxes? Uh, I think, yeah, there's already the uh, one that I created for the Linux Administration Master Course. So, uh, uh, how about we'll enter that? Toolbox, enter, LAMC. So that's a pristine container. Oh, wait. Interesting. I think there must have been an update to Toolbox just recently. And when I had to reboot my machine this morning, uh, that new version of Toolbox was enabled because that's how Fedora Silverblue works. Um, updates don't affect the running system. They only apply after a reboot. And that seems to be the case. Container LAMC is too old and no longer supported. I can't imagine why that would be. I just created it a few days ago, I think. Something's odd here. How about entering my, my main toolbox? That does work. I mean, I can always uh, shut that down. That's not a problem, and I can recreate it. It was supposed to be a pristine toolbox anyway. So uh, let me stop LAMC. Then I can do toolbox... Uh, is it remove? Uh, let's see. Toolbox RM. Let's do toolbox create LAMC, which is still in my uh, history because I just did it recently. I really can't explain that uh, error message. Maybe toolbox is getting confused by the file issue as well. Let's see. Toolbox, enter, LAMC. Okay. Okay, that's fair. Um, usually I'm using the Z shell and that's not installed inside this container and I don't want it to be installed anyway because I'm going to use bash for this course so what I'm going to do is change shell dash s inside the container uh, to uh, bin bash okay that's not um, in here so we'll have to do sudo user mod Dash s bin bash gwiz Did that succeed? Yep. So if I enter this toolbox again, I should be... Nope. Do I have to stop it? Let's see. Uh, Portman stop LAMC. Now let's enter LAMC again. No. Still trying to use seashell. It should actually... Oh! It's still seashell. How is that the case? How oh, very strange. Uh, sudo user mod dash s in bash jeebus now it's bin bash if i re-enter it's a bin bash hmm curious so that's inconsistent. It should use the uh, shell that's uh, inside the def that's defined inside the container. That has been a change in recent toolbox versions. Anyway, we wanted to check the U limits. 
No, Q limit dash soft limit for N is one meg, and the uh, heart limit is one meg. So that's definitely not related to the host system. Hmm. And you'd need Podman to have the U limits passed through. You got Podman 1.5. So that shouldn't be a problem. Hmm. We have toolbox 0099.4. Is that in any way recent? Yeah, that's the most recent release. Even though it's a very strange version number. I just realized it's uh, five o'clock and um, I'll have to have um, my uh, walking workout and dinner. And then we're going to have the uh, group call for the Linux administration master course on the Obsidian Discord. So uh, I guess it's time for me to take a break and run. Uh, let me quickly give you the Discord address. If you'd like to join us over there. Does this work? Oh, it does. Nice. Um, yeah, um, join us over there if you'd like to chat in and outside of the chat, um, uh, of the stream. Um, Discord works as well. Uh, if you'd like to chat, uh, you can chat from Twitch and from our Discord server. And yeah, I'll have to debug my toolbox issue uh, another time. Today, I'm, I've run out of time. But uh, thanks for dropping by. Thanks for chatting, everyone. It's been fun, and I'm happy to, that I at least was able to resolve our um, Prometheus heartbeat um, problem. Uh, that'll go into our um, infrastructure as code repository, and um, that'll allow us to be sure that Prometheus is doing what it's supposed to do. And um, that being said, I'll be back on Thursday with, as I said, the uh, next lecture for the Linux Administration Master Course. This is uh, going to be public stream, so you can drop by anytime you like and uh, also have a chat, even if you don't participate in the course. And on Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. my time, which is uh, 1 p.m. UTC, I'm going to do the Obsidian Office Hour, where it's up to you to determine which topics we're going to talk about. And until then, take care.